morning, it's Jeff Christian. It's uh, Friday morning, the 23rd of July, uh, coming to you from New York, CPM Group. I wanted to talk a little bit about the market. Uh, last week in our presentation, I spoke about stable liquidation and about seasonal price weakness in gold and silver uh, that often occurs in July and August. Uh, I talked about other factors that suggest to CPM Group that the gold and silver prices could be strong yet in the final week of July, uh, but that they could come down and possibly come down significantly, if briefly, in August and into September. All of that is still valid, and the prices may sell off after next week. We do think that with the FOMC meeting coming up next week on the 27th and 28th of July, the markets will be uh, sort of playing an open field there, and, and gold and silver might stay a little bit higher above in their recent ranges. Uh, they are testing the low ends of their ranges, uh, as we've talked about for several weeks now, really throughout July. Um, and we also think that the August COMEX roll uh, of gold uh, futures contracts will help support the prices somewhat next week. Uh, as of Yesterday, the 22nd, Thursday, uh, the 22nd of July, you had about 19.6 million ounces of August futures contracts that still will be rolled into primarily the December uh, contract uh, over the next, most of it over the next five trading days. So that could support the prices in the last week of July. Once that's behind the market in early August, and uh, we think that the prices could come off. There are several factors. One is, yes, seasonal weakness. The second is that st stable liquidation that I was talking about. But economic conditions are shaping up to be, quote, not that bad. I mean, you know, obviously we have problems, uh, but economic activity in the United States and other parts of the world are, is improving. Uh, the concerns about the economy have lessened in the minds of many reasonable investors in, in, in the markets. Inflation fears also have been decreasing among most of the population and most of the investing public. Yes, we're seeing inflation spike higher, but when you start disaggregating the figures, you see that there is a lot of evidence that a big part of what we're seeing with the inflation figures are basis. You're measuring it off of the second quarter of 2020 when the world was shut down and people weren't buying things. Uh, and also transitory as we come out of that recession and move into uh, a new economic uh, level. We still haven't, in terms of GDP, the United States still is in the recovery phase in that total GDP, uh, as measured in dollar terms, has not gotten back to where it was at the end of 2019, early 2020, before the pandemic and the global economic lockdown. But inflation fears have been dissipating in the, in the broader markets, even as there's been a lot of hype about hyperinflation in the gold and silver markets. Most mainstream uh, investors are not necessarily worried. The dollar has been showing some strength and the stock market has not collapsed. I mean, we keep hearing about how the stock market is going to collapse, but it hasn't. Now, it, might go through a significant sell-off. Our expectation is that that could occur like around October, late September, early October, uh, but we don't necessarily see it happening in August. And I think there are any number of investors who had been pivoting into gold and silver because they were concerned that the stock market was so high that it was due for a correction. And then they were hearing these guys talk about how the stock market's gonna fall by 50% and stuff like that. I think a lot of those people have pivoted away from their fears of an imminent sharp stock market decline with the understanding that what's going on in terms of monetary accommodation and fiscal stimulus is really helping to support the stock market. So I think there's a number of economic factors that have uh, that are sort of setting up to be somewhat negative on a short-term basis for gold and silver. Uh, and then I think there's some fundamentals too. There are ample supplies, there are record levels of gold and silver in London and New York and China and Switzerland. Um, you are seeing some increase in fabrication demand and, and some increase in investment demand. But even there, you're finding uh, some seasonal weakness uh, 
occurring and emerging in investment demand and fabrication demand. And then you have those stable investors that I was talking about. Some of these people who were very, very much concerned uh, that the price was going to, uh, that the world was really in bad shape and they, that gold and silver prices were going to rise very sharply. Um, and it ha prices have risen. Let me just go to the one chart that I have, which is the same chart I used last week. Prices rose really primarily in July of 2020 at the height of the pandemic uh, and the global lockdown uh, around the world. And, and gold prices and silver prices both rose very sharply in July, 2020. They sold off in August and you know, silver has been trading, water, uh, sideways, trending sideways ever since. Gold came down uh, into the second quarter, third, first, second quarter of this year and, and then and it has risen back. So a lot of investors say, okay, these prices are very high. $1,800 is a very high price for gold and from a historical perspective, even going back to prices prior to the second quarter of 2020. Uh, and silver prices around $24, $28, you know, A, is substantially higher than they were earlier uh, in recent years. And uh, they're still pretty high and they give great profitability to mining companies great profitability of secondary recovery from scrap, old electronics, jewelry, and other things. And uh, they cause some fabricators to say, let's see if we can reduce our per unit use of gold and silver. So I think that the fundamentals also are showing some signs of potential weakness and stables are picking up on that. Also, you have a number of people who are new entrants into the silver investment market and to some extent, to a lesser extent, in the gold market, who were buying metal based on the idea that their the supplies were tight, that the world was running out of silver, that inventories were virtually empty in London, and that the inventories were going to fall sharply in New York in the New York market. None of which has really happened, uh, and you've got some disillusioned investors also leaving the market, and that all makes the market somewhat vulnerable to a decline. Now, going back, you know, it's, it's interesting that the prices rose in July. CPM Group started making these weekly videos in the second quarter of last year. Uh, we had, for many years, done videos for our yearbook launches, for our individual clients, but most of our focus uh, has been on webinars and reports for larger market participants, mining companies, central banks, governments, international organizations, fabricators, refiners, you know, uh, larger and, and larger investors. And I think I've discussed it several times in the past. Uh, I, uh, most of our revenue comes from institutional investors, either family offices or wealthy individuals or actual institutions from we, we go from individual investors and family offices up to the largest uh, asset management companies in the world. Most of our business is on the buy side of institutional investing. We do very little on the sell side. I feel I should repeat that because I continue to hear that I'm a shill for the, the banks um, and that I work for JP Morgan. JP Morgan has never paid CPM Group a dollar. We have cost it tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars in foregone profits because we work with the mining companies and institutional investors and family offices, helping those companies do better in their investing. So when an investment bank will come out with say a gold index note, oftentimes some of our institutional clients will show it to us and say, let's counterbid. And we'll go back and say, well, that's an interesting gold index note but we're not interested in it. But we would buy this from you instead. Something that's more profitable and more potentially profitable for the, mine, uh, for the investor and less profitable for the investment bank that's selling that product. Similarly with hedging, uh, the World Bank has said that we have the, probably the most uh, effective commodity price risk management program that it's ever seen in the world. Uh, and we provide hedging services to producers, refiners, smelters, and fabricators, companies, commercial companies that actually use these things. And what we do is we shift the table. So we like to have a, a game, it's like a poker game. 
in which you can lose $10 per hand, but you can win unlimited amounts. So what we do is we work for those commercial companies and we produce and, 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 and structure and price and sometimes actually manage those hedges for the companies so as to keep most of the blue sky for them while giving them the price protection they need. So we do this kind of stuff and, and we've done it since the 1980s uh, for large market participants. But we've been moving toward working with retail investors and smaller retail investors. And it's been illuminating for me and probably for some of my colleagues to learn some of the ways these folks think about the markets and approach the markets and approach market data. Uh, and as I said, in the second quarter of 2020, we started doing these weekly videos. Initially, they were for our trade recommendations on gold and silver, uh, but they grew and in, blossomed into a broader discussion. So last week, for example, we spent a lot of time talking about some of the truths behind the Treasury, the, the U.S. Treasury's federal debt, uh, as opposed to the myths and the scare tactics that the carnival barkers use. In August of last year or July of last year, one of the retail investors who was watching our videos on YouTube said, "Who are you? You know, I, you know, I." see CPM Group's name here and there. I've watched your videos. It's pretty interesting. You seem to be the sober guys. You seem to be the go-to people for when I need really concrete, accurate, unbiased information. Um, you're the guys who, when I hear a rumor that the world's running out of silver or, or, or there's uh, uh, central banks are buying gold hand over fist, I can go to you and get some accurate statistics and analysis. But who are you? So we did a video last year, August 18th, um, and we produced this. It was an introduction to CPM Group. And you can see here this, you know, we produced the yearbooks, retail investment programs, and at the bottom, an introduction to CPM Group. Uh, you can see the link, and the link should be on the cover email here. And what we did is we sort of explained who we are, where we come from, how uh, we've been in the market since the late 70s, early 80s. We've been independent as CPM Group since 1986. Uh, and we explained a lot about what we do. And I thought that given that we've been doing this for about 15, 18 months now, uh, it's probably a good time to, to refresh that. One of my relatives stumbled over this video this past week and started circulating around other relatives saying, hey, you know, Finally, I understand what Jeff, Jeff does for a living. That's all I have for this week. Uh, and enjoy yourself on the weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.